Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today, we are gonna talk about combo boxes, how to create a combo box and then add it to your frame. And also how to apply the action listener on your combo box. So without delay, let's start. So if you wanna create a combo box, you use a Java class called jcombobox, okay? So I'm gonna declare combo box instance here, so J combo box, I will call it combo box and then semicolon. I need to import the J combo box class and in the constructor, I can instantiate the combo box. Combo box assignment operator, new J combo box. And we can add this combo box to the frame. So this that add combo box. I need to put O here. So since our layout manager is set to null. We need to define the alignment and the dimension of our combo box ourselves. So I will say combo box that set bound 200, 200, 150, 100. So that's the combo box. Nothing when I run. Now you can see combo box showing on the screen. When I click, in the list, I don't have any options, okay? I'm gonna show you how to add the options in the list. But let me first fix the size of my combo box here and let me run. All right, so now this is how my combo box is looking like. So now when you click, there's no option in my combo box. How do you add the options in your combo box? So we need a string of arrays because the combo box takes an array as a parameter so let's define a string of arrays we will say string i say fruits and then square brackets assignment operator curly braces and inside the curly braces i'm going to add my string values so i will say orange another one will be apple and then banana and then mango so after we have instantiated our string of array we need to pass it in our combo box constructor so i'll come down here inside the brackets i will say fruits and now when i run you can see i am having my options in the combo box so actually there are various methods we can use with the combo box and i'm going to try to show you some of these methods one of the methods that we can use is called add item so the add item method is used if you want to add a particular item in your combo box so here in the add item for example if i say that i want to add another fruit i'll say watermelon and then when I run past here, you can now see that watermelon is part of my combo box list of options. You can also use another method called remove item. So combo box that remove item. So let's say that we want to remove banana from the list. So now when I run, you can see from this banana is no more showing because of this line of code we said remove item banana. Okay, let me comment this. We can sometimes choose to remove all items. So we will say combo box that remove all items and then semicolon. So if you do remove all items like this and run, now you see nothing is showing in the combo box because we have, we have removed everything, all right? So we can also talk about another method that is called insert item, a combo box that insert item at. So this particular method is going to insert an item and it's also going to determine the index position of the new item. So if we say insert item at index position zero, so now lemon is going to be our very first item. So when you run, now you see lemon is the first option on the list. Instead of saying insert item, we can also say remove item at a specific index position. So we say remove item at, so this method takes an integer, parameter if i say remove item at index position zero and run lemon is no longer going to show on the list so it has removed orange because we didn't have we don't have lemon anymore and then it will remove the item at 
the index position zero, which is the first item. We can also define whether the combo box is editable or not. So that will be combo box. That's the name we give to our combo box that set editable and then false. So this is going to set our combo box to unedit. You can see, so there's no way to edit a combo box. What if we say true here and run? Now you can see the combo box is editable. So you can actually write inside a combo box. So now what other method we can look at? So we will use the set selected method. This is set selected index. This method is particularly going to determine which combo box item option will be selected by default as soon as we open our application. If I say index two, so this is going to make sure when we run our application, banana is going to be the um, combo box option selected by default. And when I run, you see banana here. If I say one, it's going to be apple because apple is at the index position one zero it's going to be orange if we didn't define this line of code by default the first option in our combo box or in our string array will be the selected option when i run you see orange is selected by default because it's the first string item here in our array okay so you can use combo box that set selected index or you can simply use the combo box that set selected item. And then here you pass in the item you want to select. Let's say I want to select mango. And then when I run, you can see now mango is the selected option or the selected item. All right, so just like I told you, there are various methods that you can use and play around, you know, manipulate your combo box the way you wish. So now we are going to apply the concept of action listener to the combo box. So we need to add a button. So we will say J button, BTN. Okay, let's import the J button class. We will instantiate the button. So BTN new J button. And here we say, show me, or I will say, what is your choice? So what we want here, we want to use this button to make sure that when the user clicks on it, it's going to show us the um, item that the user has selected from the combo box. So I need a label. So J label, label, let me import the label, come down here, instantiate my label, new J label, and I will set its text for now to label. All right, what I need to do is I'll have to set the bounds. So copy and paste. Yeah, I'll copy and paste. Let me fix this one here. Label that set bounds. And this is going to be button that set bounds. Work on the X axis, maybe 450. This one I'll say 100. And I need to add these to my frame. So I'll say this that add label. And then this that add BTN. Let's check how this is looking like. All right, so we have a button, we have the label, and then we have our combo box. Maybe for the label on the combo box, we're gonna fix some few coordinates here. So that's gonna be it. Then I'm gonna say like this, let me run. I'll say 120, 120. All right, this looks a lot more better. Okay, so now let's add the action listener. So we will say, implement action listener import the action listener class add on implemented methods that's going to be the action performed method and then add the action listener to the button because we will have to click on the button so let's say btn add action listener in the bracket say this and now in here we will say change the name of the action event parameter uh, so I'll say if EBT that get source equal BTN, that's the button on which we added the action listener. And down in the brackets here, we will say string MSG. Now we say you selected, and we will have to concatenate. We will say combo box. So here we want to return, you know, the option. Because here, for example, if the user selects Orange, for example, we want to say that you selected, okay, you selected orange, something like that. So we need to return that word orange. So in order for us to return that, we will say combo box get item at. So this is 
normally is supposed to return the index number of our item and we will pass in combo box that get selected index so get selected index will return the index and then get item art will return the item in question all right so once the item is returned we can say label that set text so this label that set text is going to update the text of our label for now we are just writing label so we need to update that with this msg variable so we will pass in msg here so now if we run and let's say that i select watermelon and click what is your choice so you can see you selected watermelon so I, instead of saying you selected i can even say your choice is your choice is and then this line of code here all right so we can actually um maybe add some other attributes but i just wanted to show you how you can play around the combo box so we, if we want our frame to look a lot more better we can add some fonts and and all of that so for example for the label we can say label that set font new font arial font that bold 20 pixels and then label that set foreground say color that blue let's import the color class for the button we say btn that set background color that red we can copy and paste these two lines of code and say btn btn down here for ground i will say for btn will be white and now let's run run to fix some coordinates okay so now wait, let me see when i run let me select watermelon see your choice is watermelon i need to increase the width of the label if i say 500 and run here yeah so that's it i will apply some of these properties to my um combo box and here i'll say combo box combo box as well but if i say black the foreground select mango and that's it so we can add some more text here and say congratulations for the combo box let's see if we change the background color and we'll put that here and set it to white it will say combo box so now when we run okay so that's how our combo box is looking i will simply say congrats run all right guys so that was it on your combo box how to create a combo box how to add it to your frame how to add a button apply the action listener on a button use the get selected get item add methods and the other uh, various methods we have seen in this video i hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like to share and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one let's meet in the next one